Our scripture meditation for this evening is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, and also verse 6. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, and verse 6. At some point in my childhood, I remember asking, well, begging my dad to buy me a bicycle. Eventually, he took me to a store and let me pick out my new ride. It was black with gold trim. How I love that bike. One day, he let me go outside by myself and ride it. Several older boys approached me and tried to take it from me. I rode back to the house and carried the bike up the stairs only to be greeted at the door by my father. He immediately instructed me to get back out there and ride the bike. I was fearful of the gang of boys, but could hardly express it to my dad. I trembled at the thought of being out there all by myself. However, I noticed my dad was walking behind me. He brought Uncle Smith and Uncle Wesson with him. He dared any of those boys to try and take my bike. Let me tell you, I felt 10 feet tall. First, I did not realize that even though I was outside by myself, that my father had been looking through the window. Second, when I realized he was present, I felt safe, secure, and enjoyed every minute of riding that bike. What a feeling to know your father is watching over you, even when you think you are all alone and when you have a crisis and you think you're by yourself, it's good to know that he had been there looking all the time. Currently, we find ourselves in what has been termed a pandemic because of the unseen but real enemy. Who knows how long this crisis will last? People are already losing their jobs, health insurance, and before long, some will even lose their minds if they're not careful. I heard some from that. While confined to our homes, it seems that we're all alone. Life's bullies surround us. Those bullies may be in the form of viral sicknesses, financial uncertainty, job insecurity, political turmoil, broken families, or other problems that present themselves. At times, the human spirit can become so overwhelmed with trying to understand it all. We seek answers only to discover more questions. Naturally, we want to have hope. Hope needs a basis on which to build. When your foundations appear to crumble, on what basis then can you have hope? Sure, surely you relate to my story about a time in your life when a parent looked out for you when you did not even know that he or she was watching. If our earthly parents have the presence of mind to take care of us, should we not trust even more in the providence of God? I was so bu busy looking at my new bike that it never dawned on me to look toward the window to see if my father was looking. In like manner, we are so preoccupied with our life's concerns that we may not know that our heavenly father peers through the windows of heaven and keeps watch over his own. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, provide comfort for believers. These verses provide comfort needed in times like these. Let your conversation be without covetedness, and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and when I, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Verse 5 teaches us a powerful lesson about experiencing joy, peace, and contentment. Though these specific words are not found in the verse, the implication is clear. Nothing takes away your joy more than ingratitude. It's hard, if not impossible, to have peace when you want what belongs to someone else. Certainly, the absence of joy and peace make it impossible to experience any level of contentment. On the contrary, the Lord wants us to become so satisfied with his presence in our lives that we do not need money and material things for our joy, peace, and contentment. 
This text does not teach us to live in poverty, nor does it deny the ethic we need to work and make a living. This verse cautions us that in the pursuit of things, we easily forget to pursue God. Further, coveting begins when we have an emptiness within. That empty, emptiness may stem from unresolved problems, lack of emotional healing, lack of closure from past events, relationship abandonment, family dysfunction, personal insecurities, and inner brokenness. Falsely, people try to insulate their emptiness or make up for their unresolved personal problems by filling their lives with, th with stuff. In actuality, the things we desire do not resolve any of our problems. They may take up space, but the inner problem still exists. All of the things we acquire just becomes more junk stacked on top of the problems that are already present. God, on the other hand, wants us to see the value of his presence. He offers us the love that we have been otherwise denied by others. He wants us to know that by his spirit, he offers us healing from all of the things that have broken us in life. Many go through life not addressing their life's problems, not recognizing that God not only wants to get you to heaven, but he wants to offer you a little heaven on earth by helping you to become better, to become healed, to become whole, and to become healthy. So the verse emphasizes exchanging our pursuit of stuff for a pursuit of God. Additionally, the very next verse teaches us to experience the same mindset I had when my father accompanied me riding my bike again. Again, I enjoyed safety and security because I was comforted by his presence, which meant his protection. The Hebrew writer illustrates this very same comfort. He says, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. Believers do not need to have the answers when the Lord is your helper. As creatures possessing the ability to think, reason, and use logic, we should engage our intellectual abilities to deliberate through our choices, and function with the mental faculties given to us. There comes a time, however, when the answer to life's problems exceed our human capacity to understand and to solve. Our limited perspectives and finite wisdom should never leave us to despair. God enables us by his grace to do what we can and trust that he will do what we cannot do. Our inability to solve life's problems even after the most concerted efforts on our part, never discourages the person of faith. Just because you do not solve the problems with your own human abilities does not mean the problem cannot be solved. If you had all of the answers, why would you need God? In closing, the Lord's presence and the Lord's superior wisdom gives us the comfort we need to survive the present crises. Always remember that God peers from the windows of heaven and carefully watches over us, even when we're riding our bike and don't think that dad is watching. God promised us in Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 20, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Be comforted, be safe, and be secure, knowing that even if you're not paying attention to God, that God is paying attention to you. May God bless you to enjoy safety and security, knowing that he's always present, even when you're not looking. Join us tomorrow night and every night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for another installment of A Few Minutes with the Minister with Words from the Master.